won a high-profile convert this week when Speaker Boehner said he would attempt to raise taxes on income over $1 million in his Plan B. Democrats, as John said, say that plan has no chance of passing. So what do the millionaires themselves think? Abigail Disney is a filmmaker and philanthropist. She is also the grandniece of Walt Disney, and she joins us here at Post 9. Abigail, great to see you. Good morning. Great to be here. Um, is this considered a victory, this idea that if you make more than a million, you will pay more? It, it's a step in the right direction. It's definitely a step, big step in the right direction. But uh, I think we need more revenue that's going to generate. It's going to have to drop below the million-dollar mark. Now, we've had a few from your group on the show, mm -hmm. and they are often received with a lot of hostility yep. from people who are not millionaires themselves. Yeah. Why, is that, why does that happen? Uh, you know, I, I can't say it. I, I can explain it because I don't really understand it myself. But I, I think that there is um, a particular hostility to people who are willing to be traitors to their own class. <laughs> that is a it's unique to, um, to, to our culture. But, you know, democracy is more than six wolves and a sheep voting on what to have for dinner, right? right we right. have to represent more than the interests of our own selves and our own class in order to make sense of this right. big thing that we call a government. Oh, now, we, again, we, again, in talking to your group, the message seems to be we are willing to pay more, mm -hmm. but not blindly, right, and oh. not for nothing in return. The Journal today says giving, giving more in taxes without, with this, this notion of cuts mm -hmm. is foolish. Mm -hmm. So how specific does your group want to see when, when it comes to reform? We want to see a balanced approach between cuts and revenues. But what, you know, the, what the cuts that the Republicans have offered are so gargantuan and disproportionate to what they're talking about in terms of revenues. This is, and this is something that you can talk about, you know, as a right and wrong issue, and you can be aspirational and, and talk about the moral, but there's also a really important logical argument, which is that these cuts are going to come on the backs of the middle class and the working class in this country, and we are going to kill the goose that lays the golden egg, which is our consumers and, and the very basis of all this economic activity around us. How about, I mean, I, I imagine you must hear from people who are millionaires, uh, who would be affected, mm -hmm. but they're, they're just barely millionaires, right? Mm -hmm. Or they are responsible for a payroll, or tax decisions affect their their thinking at the margin, right? Yeah. Should they yeah. be, I mean, yeah. we got to draw the line somewhere, but should they be included in this group? Well, you know, there was a, a big step happened when we moved from 250 to 400, as Obama suggested. At 250, the small businesses would only represent 3%. 3% of the people affected by this and those decisions that they're making, I mean, I don't know a lot of small business owners that are really making hiring and firing decisions on the basis of their marginal tax rates. Uh, finally, there's this feeling that the president, he wants the revenue, sure, but what he really wants is it to be, quote, fair, mm -hmm. which people have a problem with, too. You think that's the way it is? Is that how well, the White House sees it? Fair is such a squishy word. <laughs> it's almost unfair how squishy the word <laughs> fair is, right? Um, but, but there has been a, a grotesque of divide in, in income and wealth um, distribution in this country, and it's grown in the last 10 years. And we've watched it grow, and in many cases, as a direct result of the tax breaks that we got in 2003 under George Bush. And so this is a really big step in the right direction in in terms of making sense of income and wealth disparities in this country, which is the basis of building a much healthier economy for everyone. Well, certainly going to make for some interesting dinner conversation this, this holiday season, I imagine, at yes. your house, too. Yes. Abigail, thank you for coming in. Thanks so much.